Hi, it's Kernetex here with another video in the series about installing Gen2 Linux on a 32 bit machine. So, as I said in my previous video, I wasn't really planning on doing going any further with the Gen2 um, installation videos apart from getting a basic Gen2 system up and running um, and then leaving it up to you as to what you wish to use it for but I thought oh, it would be kind of nice to see how well slow I guess um, an actual graphical desktop would be on, on this machine so I've decided to have a go at installing um, X Windows and X Org and um, maybe a few environments and some applications as well just to see how it handles and maybe even um, see how badly, I presume it's going to be badly, uh, videos play because I, I can't foresee it's going to be particularly good um, as the processor hasn't got any of those sort of uh, enhanced instructions to speak of for handling multimedia. So I've got the um, Xorg guide up for Gen 2, sort of leads you through what to do to install a an X Windows system using Xorg. So um, I'll just whiz down here, there's lots of information about it and about the Xorg project. Um, and it goes through about what you need to do to prepare for getting um, an X Windows system. So I'm going to try and do this um, straight onto the um, term. No, in fact, I won't actually. I think I'll, I'll come out of this. Uh, I'm on the actual machine and just um, leave that there and what I think I'll do is I'll get a uh, I think I've got a prompt here yeah, and do this remotely so what I've got here is I've got a um, terminal where I've logged into um, the 32-bit machine the twin AMD 2400 plus uh, Athlon MP machine um, just make things a little bit easier. So first thing I'm going to do is to become root so that I can go into the kernel and just check some settings. So as you see, it says um, you need to enable FDEV in the kernel, the event interface. So this may already be set, it may not, I don't know, but we, we need to check. So it's under device drivers and input device support. Just down there, and we're looking for something called event interface. So it's not set, so I'm going to have to rebuild the kernel, unfortunately. Um, kernel mode setting. Modern open source video drivers rely on kernel mode setting. So verify legacy frame buffer device has been installed. Um, now I'm not sure whether the graphics card I've got is considered to be old or not. It's probably about, um, I suppose about 15 years old, um, which is quite old. Um, but there are NVIDIA binary blobs, which um, are still around to support older cards. So I'm going to use this E query Y um, I think it's in NVIDIA drivers to see what versions there are. Right, I don't think this version here is going to be new enough um, to support my video card. Um, to LSPCI. Crap, I 
sine of each yay. So it's a G71 core. So let's see what I can find out about that on the internet. So G47 series, which is what it says, 7800 GS. Oh, right, yes, I remember now. This was uh, what they called a golden sample, so it's probably what the GS stands for. I think it was a PCI-based graphics card, as I remember, that was shoehorned into a, an AGP interface. Um... 7900 Yeah, I think this is what it is here, plus 7800 GS. Yes, that's right. It's um, a 7900 GT GPU, so that's kind of what I'm looking at. So let's go to the NVIDIA website. Let's see what it tells me on there. So it's a... when this loads. It's still loading. So it's a G Force Seven Series, and it's got to be thirty two bit. So let's do for Windows XP. Let's search. Right, so three oh seven is the last version that it was supported. And the latest version on Gen 2 is 390, so it looks like I'm not going to be able to use the binary um, version. I'm going to have to use the open source in uh, Nouveau driver and just hope that's good enough for this card. Um, let's see what happens if I try to emerge in video drivers. I think it warns you if the uh, driver's too old. No, it doesn't look like it is warning me. Um, let's try the eight series. Yeah, that's gone to 340, and even that's old as well, so it looks like 700, yeah, there's no 7000 there, yeah, so I, I can't use the binary blob that Gen 2 has got. Um, I, if I wanted to use the binary blob, I'd have to uh, try and, if, this, if there isn't a Linux one, no, there's not even a Linux 32-bit version available, so it has got to be the um, Nouveau open source version that's in the kernel, which I think I've already installed anyway, so um, that's not too much of a problem. But the Nuvo is a modern driver anyway, so irrespective of the age of the card. Um, so let's go back into the kernel config and check these options here so we'll go to device drivers graphics support 
which is about a page down. Frame buffer devices. Support frame buffer devices. It says disable all drivers, including VJ, Intel, NVIDIA, and ATI, except for EFI based, only for using UEFI. So let's just check. Everything's off there, so that's okay. Let's quit that. Now further down, enable basic console support, KMS will use this. So console display driver support. And we want frame buffer console, that's already set, so that's okay. Now we'll configure the kernel to use the proper KMS driver for the video card, Intel, NVIDIA, and AMD ATI. So, because this is an old processor, there's no built-in graphics, it's a discrete, separate graphics card as you say, as you've seen it's a NVIDIA 7800 DS so I need to check that I've got this option enabled here which is the open source version graphics support Nuvo video card so yeah it's already set up in there so that's okay so let's scroll down So now we need to go into make.conf, so let's save that. Um, let's build this now. I'm probably going to have to rebuild it again. As we go through, there's probably going to be more things that we'll need to tweak in the kernel as we go through this. I'm hoping that being as there's only that one um, event interface that there's not going to be too many changes to the kernel and it'll just build a very small part of it, or rebuild a very small part of it. Yeah, it looks like it's just uh, compiled what it needs, so that's that's good. Right, perhaps I shouldn't have been so hasty. I've just remembered there's a separate section about the Nuvo driver, so I'm going to have to go back into the kernel. It looks like I might need to set something here. Um, so it's saying there to activate the legacy FB dev support for the mode setting driver. Now, I'm not sure why we need that because I'm pretty sure the Nuvo covers that, so I'm actually going to leave that for the moment um, and see what happens. But if I go back to this, because this is they're both mentioning um, this video cards variable. Um, in make.conf so let's put that aside and just finish this off so make install I haven't got any modules to build or rebuild so I'm just going to go straight to grub make config just to make sure that the uh, config file is up to date And I'll reboot that to make sure we've got those updates. And just wait for that to um, boot up now. Uh, yeah, 
that's the one I want. So despite the fact there's still something on the screen, it has actually rebooted. So it's just, um, there should be a blank screen at the moment. It is actually booting. So when it does come up, we should see it uh, reset the screen. That's probably just what's left in the uh, video memory. Okay, looks like maybe the, uh, oh no, there it is, it has, it has woken up. I heard it start and it seemed to have fallen asleep then. Right, let's press enter that. So it looks like everything's booting up as normal, so that's good. I'll go back to the web browser and the terminal and try and log in again. And the SSH daemon comes up. should be there now let's try that again that's better right okay so as it says here um, there's a variable we need to add to the uh, make conf and this tells Portage what video card we're using. So there's a whole page about it there. I'm not going to go into it. I'm just going to copy this bit here. So that's either going to be Intel, maybe Intel i915 or 9165, or it might be AMD or NVIDIA if you're using the binary driver. Uh, but for me, NVIDIA with the open source driver, it's Nouveau. So I'll save that. Um, and then as you can see, it suggests to do an update. To see if that's affected anything else. I doubt if it has because we've only got basic packages at the moment. And then it goes on to input devices. So let's check the rest of this. And it does say if you if NVIDIA's proprietary driver has been installed, it will have installed UDEV files, the uh, rules file. Um, but they conflict with the Nouveau driver, so you have to um, remove them as it says down here. Yeah, there's nothing that's what I expected. Now it says about giving permissions to the user uh, to get access to the video card. So um, let's see what this returns. I don't think console kit's used anymore. Yeah, we've got that. It doesn't look like that's returning anything. Um, this is something we'll have to do is add, add the user to the video group. So let's 
So let's do groups and text. Yep, so that's been added. I don't know if this will work now. No, it's not working. I'm not sure, like I say, whether that means anything now because console kit's not, not used anymore. Um, it says about uh, more about the X server, which we're going to come to, and the limitations of the open source driver. So not really concerned much more about that. The only thing I might have to enable if I do have problems is this option here, which I'm pretty sure is currently disabled. So um, next thing we need to look at is the input devices. And again, this is something we have to specify in make.config. And there's a command there we can run to see what's currently set. So lib input is what's set. And as you can see, this is what they're, they're using here. So um, I haven't got Synaptics touchpad. It's not a laptop. So all I need to do is just copy this into the make.config as well. And I'll add that below there. And save that. If the suggested settings does not work, merge the X11 base X all driver, see the step below. Right, I think this is saying this will identify the drivers. Um, let's put an A. Um, and it will actually show you what what it would would be using. But there's a load of settings that need to be done. Right, so it's not coming up with anything useful because it needs to know whether I'm using eLoginD or SystemD. Well, I'm definitely not using SystemD, and eLoginD is a replacement for console kit. So I need to add this sysauth poll kit into the package.use. Um, in fact, I think eLoginD might be a global variable, a global flag. So we should check these anyway. Uh, let's go to the top. E D. Yes, it is a, a global. So I'm going to add that into make.conf alphabetically. Oops. Uh, do insert. That's better. Save that. Try that again. As you can see, it's saying this is part of the rule for this package. It needs exactly one of either eLoginD or SystemD. So it gives a hint as to what's required. So what's happened here now? Um, okay, it's actually telling us that we need X. Yeah, this hasn't, if I skip past it, I'm whizzing right down. Um, like dot conf Intel input. All oh, right. Okay. So this is, this is the thing with the wiki. It does take you to other places that you need to read. And this bit's telling us about the actual X server. Um, and this is where it tells us that we need to set this use flag, um, which is what the problem is here. This, this file here needs the X use flag. So we need to set that explicitly. So I'll set this alphabetically and it comes at the beginning, uh, because it's, uh, a capital letter and then the ASCII list of characters the uppercase become for the lowercase now you might want to put this just in alphabetical order 
ignoring case, but I stick to the ASCII ordering of things, so that's why I put it at the beginning. So let's retry this. Um, again, it's referring back to XOR drivers, which is what we're trying to work out now. So that's come up with something else it's not happy about. All uh, right, okay, so it looks like there's no chance of us having X windows of any sort because it needs SSE2 and this chip hasn't got SSE2. So really that is the end of this. I can't go any further. Um, it is only going to be a machine that's going to be used for uh, text-based stuff. So it's really only be useful as a server um, uh, unless there's specific things that can be done at command line day-to-day -day stuff but it looks like it's server only it's a bit unfortunate but it shows its age had it been an intel of the same time i'm pr pretty sure the pentium 4s had had sse2 um and it would have been possible to to do this so a bit unfortunate but anyway let, now i know for sure that um it cannot be done so a bit of a letdown, but thanks for watching anyway. Um, if you've enjoyed it, you've learned something from this like I have, then uh, click the thumbs up and uh, want to hear about my other videos, just click the red subscribe button um, and you'll be notified uh, of any new videos I publish. So thanks again for watching. Goodbye.